So the first concept that I want to get into here within Microsoft Excel is working with a well-formatted proper design list. Open in front of you, I've got the example file that comes with this course. You can see at the top of my screen, it's called Excel 102 Exercises, and it's a .xlsx document. Jump back to lecture number two within this course and download this file. This is the one that you're going to be using and the one that I'm going to be using throughout the remainder of this course. So make sure you have that and even open it up in front of you so you can follow along with me as I demonstrate these various features. So here's the first concept. There's actually two that I want to bring in here and make you aware of as you work within Excel with a list. Now inside the exercise file that I have open, I'm looking at the employee records tab. And on here, I have a simple little list, nothing big, but you can see at the top of my list, and this is the first concept that we should all adhere to, very first row, I've got my column headers, the identifiers of the data within this list. Now, it serves two purposes. One, they're there for us as end users of this list, you yourself and your coworkers and so on, can make it more accessible. We can find the data. We know that in column C, I have first name. In column F, I've got phone extension. In column A, I've got employee ID, and so on. So they, they make the list more accessible for us, the end users of the list. Adding records is gonna be much easier because we know what goes into this list. Finding data, much easier because we know which column to look for, and so on. It, it, it's as simple as that. They're there to help us identify the data and make it more accessible. The second reason we want the column headers, and this deals with Excel, the tool itself. Excel by default wants the headers, and it looks in the very first row for your headers. Now you might ask, well, you know what, what if I didn't have headers? Would Excel still look in the very first row for headers? Well, that's, that's an excellent question. You know what? Yes, it would look, but the way that it identifies that these are my headers, they're formatted differently. Just do something simple, like make them bold, give them an underline, do something different to that very first row than the rest of the records. This way Excel recognizes that, yep, indeed, those are the headers within this list. Again, really simple. Put them up there, they're there for you, they're also there for Excel. Now why are they there for Excel? Well, when you start doing things like sorting and filtering and pivot tables and calculations, anything that really deals with specific columns, Excel will identify it by their column header. So for example, I want to sort by last name. Well, Excel, Excel says, great, I know where last name's at, I'll go sort it for you. It identifies it by the column headers. Ooh, I want to do a pivot table and I want to summarize, I want to get a count of how many different departments we have. Ooh, well, Excel says, yeah, okay, department, I know where that's at. Let's go ahead and go count those departments. So they're for you and they're for Excel. Make sure they're the very first row on your list and you formatted them differently than the rest of the data in the list. So there's the first concept. Here's the second one of a well-formatted, properly designed list. Make sure that your list does not have any empty rows in the list or columns. For example, I come in here, this is row number 17, and I delete that record. I just hit my delete key on my keyboard. Now, I'm up above that row. Let's imagine that that empty row is, you know, hundreds or thousands of records off the screen, right? So I'm up here at the top going along my merry way, right? I'm sorting, I'm filtering, I'm running pivot tables, I'm, you know, doing all sorts of stuff to this list. I think all is right in the world. Yay! Well, you know what? All is not right in the world. Okay? Well, look what happens. Take a look. I have an empty row in this list. Excel is going to interpret this as two separate lists because it's no longer a contiguous list. Watch this. So I'm up here at the top, and I'm going to give you a shortcut key here. I'm going to select that entire list. On my keyboard, I'm going to press Control-A. This will jump out and grab my data. Oh, but what happened here? It didn't grab the data down below. Why didn't it grab the data down below? Because of that empty row. 
So make sure that you don't have any empty rows, any empty columns in your list. This will assist Excel in finding your data, the proper data, all of the data. Just watch out for that. So two things, really simple. Make sure your list has headers at the top. They're there for you, they're there for Excel. And make sure your list does not have any empty rows or empty columns so that Excel can find all of the data. As simple as that. Create a properly designed, a well-formatted list by adhering to these two concepts.